What's going on guys? So thank you first and foremost for tuning in. I am currently going through a 72 hour fast and at the time of making this video, I'm about 22 hours into it. So I did share this with everybody on Instagram first, letting them know that I planned on doing a 72 hour fast and I got a lot of questions as to why am I doing it? What is my reasoning behind it? So I figured I'd make a video to share that information with you guys. Um, first and foremost, to be completely honest, I just wanted a new challenge, right? I wanted to experience something I haven't done before. And I have heard not only is there scientific evidence showing that there are health benefits to fasting, but I've also heard a lot of people do this for spiritual reasons. Um, and some of my friends personally recommend me give it a shot in regards to, or as a means to kind of get more in tune with yourself and just provide yourself with a different challenge and a different stimulus. So um, I was going through a phase where I figured now would be a good time to implement this. I was going through a, a weird uh, mental funk and I wanted to get back into my normal routine and get back to my normal training intensity, my normal diet. But before I did that, I figured, hey, things haven't been going great for the past week in regards to my diet and training. Um, I was in California for 10 days. So when I came back, I was jet lagged. My sleep has been weird. So I figured, hey, if I'm gonna do something like this, now would be a good time. Another big reason why I wanted to do this fast was to show everyone out there that, you know, skipping a meal or not eating every five hours isn't going to be so detrimental to your physique and you're not going to lose all of your muscle mass overnight. You know, there was a time period where if I didn't eat every five hours, I would get frustrated that I wasn't taking full advantage of recovery capabilities that nutrition can provide for us and that I wasn't turning on that anabolic response to building muscle as frequently as possible. Um, now, with time, I totally understand that in the grand scheme of things, I always want to optimize my recovery, always want to optimize my nutrition. But over a three day period, you know, my physique isn't going to wither away. I'm not going to lose all this muscle mass. So, you know, skipping just one meal sure isn't going to have such a negative effect if I'm doing this for three whole days, right? Um, a lot of us have a really bad relationship with food or um, an emotional kind of connect where we feel like we have to eat X amount of times per day or we need to eat X amount of grams of protein per day in order to not wither away. And although these can be ways to optimize your nutrition, it's really important to understand that, like I said, missing one meal or skipping one workout isn't that in the world. And a lot of times, um, us as bodybuilders, we have a, a all or nothing kind of approach. And I'm just trying to step away from that mentally, at least for a brief time period, right? So I started off this fast um, by getting a DEXA scan this morning. I'm gonna show you footage for that. And I use that as a baseline measurement. It does measure lean body mass. Now, although in three days when I'm done with this fast, that lean body mass is going to go down the next time I get a DEXA scan. I understand that the majority of the lean body mass decline that we're going to see is due to muscle glycogen and even liver glycogen, right? So I'm gonna be losing a lot of water weight and that's gonna come up as lean body mass loss. However, I'm not gonna be training, so I'm not gonna be breaking down muscle tissue. I'm not gonna do anything too physically strenuous during the 72 hour fast. Um, I plan on doing a couple of yoga sessions, some light mobility work, and more importantly than all, um, I plan on doing meditation first thing in the morning and before going to sleep. So I'm not going to do anything too physically um, demanding during this fast. So I'm not going to be breaking down muscle tissue um, to a great degree by any means, right? So. I see a lot of people, they're doing 10,000 calorie challenges and food challenges, so I figured why don't I do a zero calorie challenge for three days straight. Um, another cool thing about that is once I am done with this three day fast, I'm going to be in dietary ketosis since I haven't consumed any carbohydrates or glucose during that time period. And from there, I'm actually going to experience something I've never experienced in my life and I'm going to utilize a ketogenic diet for anywhere between like four to seven days. Um, I just want to see how it feels in regards to cognitive function, 
um, how I feel in regards to physical performance. Once I start that ketogenic diet on Wednesday of this week, I am going to get back to my normal weight training routine. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how I feel while utilizing the ketogenic diet. I have utilized the ketogenic diet for my clients in the past and currently I have three clients on a ketogenic diet. So even though I understand the ketogenic diet, the science behind it, how to program it, it is different to actually know information and have that knowledge compared to experiencing it, right? So I kind of want to put those two together and finally experience what it feels like to be in dietary ketosis for a longer period of time, right? So I will be in dietary ketosis starting Wednesday for sure, um, and I should ride that out until Sunday or Monday of next week. So I'm really excited to kind of just experience something new, and I plan on keeping you guys in tune with everything that I'm doing and kind of up to date. Um, some things I'm going to do is check my blood ketone levels every morning and every night and also my blood glucose levels every morning and every night to see how that changes over time. And like I said, I will use the DEXA scan to track how much lean body mass I'm going to lose um, during the depletion phase. And I can also show you guys in a couple of weeks that once I'm eating carbohydrates again and back to my normal dietary habits, my lean body mass is gonna go right back up and that no true muscle mass was actually lost, right? So I hope you guys enjoy. Um, another topic I want to talk about real quick is something that triggered my mind a few months back was during Hurricane Irma. Um, we had a very bad storm here in Florida and a lot of people lost electricity and power for a few days. So everyone was going to the grocery store, clearing out the aisles, buying as much grocery as possible. And the following day, um, we did lose power here and we went to a buffet that was open that did not lose power. The line was out the door, um, obviously people who did lose power wanted to eat breakfast that very following day and it was just very interesting to me to observe these people's behaviors, right? They literally went, call it 12 hours without eating and they were panicking as if they were going to die if they didn't get another meal in. Um, and it just this association or this relationship that we have with food that we constantly need it or you need to eat every single day or you need to eat X amount of meals per day. Um, it's just something I kind of want to disassociate myself from. Um, and I think this challenge is going to be a great way to do that. Nonetheless, um, after this challenge, I actually do plan on getting back to my normal dietary habits, but without any sort of emotional attachment, right? So um, that's basically the point of this. I hope you guys find it interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, here on the YouTube channel or um, feel free to shoot me a direct message on Instagram. My handle is at Christopher Barica, Christopher Barica. Again, guys, thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the rest of the content. Morning weigh-in, day one of the fast, 170.2. All right, guys, so before I get my DEXA scan started, I'm gonna start off by checking my blood ketone levels first and my blood glucose levels. Um, obviously right now, I'm expecting my blood ketone levels to be very low, if I have to guess, um, anywhere between 0.1 to 0.3. Um, once you get into dietary ketosis, you need to be at 0.5 or above and no higher than 3.0. Um, so I would be surprised if I'm any higher than 0.3 right now. So let's see where I'm at, just getting some baseline data and I do know as each day goes on and I continue this fast, um, <laughs> my girl is trolling me behind the camera. Um, as the days go on and I continue this fast, you'll see my blood ketone levels continue to rise. And by the end of the second day or the end of the third day, I should be in dietary ketosis. From there, I'm just gonna start with a ketogenic diet for at least five days, um, that's the plan. We are going away this weekend though, and uh, I'm gonna have to be on a keto diet while going out to eat. So it'll be like a lot of vegetables with fatty fish or meat, and I have to refrain myself from eating carbohydrates over the weekend while we're away. So she's probably not gonna be happy about that. But um, yeah, let's get started with this blood ketone test. So it's very similar to how people check their blood glucose levels. 
um, but the strips are way more expensive. So you can get a hundred strips for blood glucose for the same price that you can only get 10 strips for blood ketones. Um, first things first, I'm going to do this. Put this right in here. And obviously I need to prick my finger, draw some blood. So in 10 seconds, we'll get a reading there. And I might check my blood glucose levels at the same exact time, kill two birds with one stone. So like I said, I was expecting to be 0 0.1 or 0 0.3, right in that range. I'm at 0 0.2 right now. Um, tomorrow might be slightly higher as I start depleting my glycogen and my liver and my, my muscle cells. And then definitely by the third day, I should be above 0 0.5. Now let's see what I would get if I test my blood glucose levels. And what's the difference between ketone levels and blood glucose levels? So you're literally measuring two different things, right? Glucose you get from carbohydrates and sugar, and ketones you get when you start breaking down fatty acids. Um, cool thing about ketones is a lot of people think your brain can only utilize glucose as an energy source, but that's not true at all. Um, your brain can actually utilize ketones for energy as well. So, so just because someone's on a, a ketogenic diet, does that mean that they've reached ketosis? If they're doing it correctly for a long period of time, absolutely. Um, if they're doing it incorrectly, which unfortunately many people do, um, they aren't in dietary ketosis and they basically feel like crap. What a lot of people do when they do the ketogenic diet the wrong way, they usually consume too much protein and not enough fat. And what happens is your body starts converting over the amino acids from the protein that you're eating and converts it over to glucose. So um, they never really get into dietary ketosis and they're never really providing their body with enough glucose or enough fat. So they kind of feel like crap the whole time. So when you're doing the ketogenic diet, you need your fats to be at least, um, you need your fats to be at least, you know, 65 to 70% of your diet. I think I got it guys, yep. So right now, my blood glucose levels are at 98. Um, it's pretty good resting glucose levels. I'm actually surprised it's not slightly lower than that. But um, perhaps my body's tapping into those glycogen stores, like I previously said, so. As the days go on, that number is going to get lower and lower, and my blood ketone level is going to get higher and higher. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Stay tuned. I do want to document the next two to three days of doing this, and then even get some content while I'm actually utilizing the ketogenic diet. The main reason I am going to try the ketogenic diet just for five days, maybe seven days, is because I do prescribe it for my clients once in a while. And even though it's not something that I currently need at this moment, um, I think it would make me a better coach to actually experience it. So I hope you guys find that interesting and thank you for tuning in. Uh, time to get this Texas skin done. All right guys, so last time I Dexa scanned, I was 172 pounds. Today I'm 170.2, so uh, weight dropped just a little bit, nothing too significant. I do think that I might be slightly leaner and have more lean body mass right now, just because the last eight weeks or so of training has been much better than it was um, before my previous Dexa scan. So we'll see what the results are. The main reason I'm doing this is actually to document how much lean body mass I'm going to essentially lose while doing this fast. A lot of people mistake lean body mass for muscle mass. And even though I am fasting for three days, I don't expect to lose any muscle at all. However, um, the results of the DEXA scan are gonna show a reduction in lean body mass. And that's because I'm gonna be losing a lot of water weight um, from my glycogen stores in my muscle cells and in my liver. I'll be fully depleted by the end of the fast. So we'll see what happens. my body fat percent right now is 9.2 which uh, it is lower than last time I was at like 10.5
10 points something. Um, let's see if I actually gain lean body mass. The last time I dexed was November 3rd, and I'm going to compare it to that just for now. I was in a really bad place, guys, mentally, physically. Um, training sucked. Um, yeah, a lot of things. Let's see. So, yeah, it put me at a 9.19% body fat. Um, not including my, my head and my brain fat. It actually puts me at 8.54, so I guess I'm leaner than I thought. I'll take that. So it's a good thing. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel shredded. Um, but when I was contest lean, I dexed it at 4.8%, um, which is absurd. Okay, let's see. Lean mass, yeah. Like I said, guys, I, I did gain lean body mass uh, just from November to now. So um, that's a very, very good sign. Training has been going better. So what are we looking at? Is this just November's or is this the comparison? So this is the comparison. So you have January 21st, 2018, November 3rd. So I gained 0.44 kilograms of uh, lean body mass since then. And let me see. I lost fat mass, which is fantastic, right? So um, yeah, I'm just happy to see that. A good little recomposition effect so there is proof right there that you can lose body fat and gain lean body mass at the same time a lot of people think that that's impossible or you can't do that it's not true at all it really is heavily dependent on your training status um, and your experience level plays a huge role in that so if you're a beginner you're going to drop a ton of body fat and gain a lot of lean body mass but as an advanced lifter it's way more difficult for that to happen Anyway, glad I got some baseline data, and <laughs> my girl is trolling me behind the camera, guys. Um, glad I got some baseline data. I'll kind of keep you guys in tune and up to date with everything that's going on over the next three days while I'm fasting, and then as I get into the ketogenic diet, um, and then even afterwards. So what I'm expecting is going to happen is my lean body mass is going to significantly drop, like I said, because I'm losing all my glycogen stores and all my um, a lot of water, a lot of water weight. So from there, after the ketogenic diet, I might do something interesting and do a really <laughs> high um, carb refeed day, a very high carb day to kind of recompensate and refill out those glycogen stores and you'll be able to see how much lean body mass changes via DEXA scan. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more content to come. Look at that smile. So annoying. Look at that smile. Yeah, it's all getting cut. No, it's not. This will be part of the blueprint. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, let's roll.